three ratios found in trigonometry are essential to, uh, to memorize, sine, cosine, and tangent. You'll notice that those have been written in shorter form. The official writing of this, of course, is sine, cosine, and tangent. And again, on a calculator or when we write them in formula um, setup, we just write sine without the E, cosine without the ending, and then tangent without its ending. One thing students do all the time, and it's understandable, is they call this sin. It's not sin, it's a sine. Okay, and um, the key to this is memorizing, you know, opposite to hypotenuse, adjacent to hypotenuse, opposite to adjacent. And a typical way to memorize that is people say so, ka, toa. And what that represents is sine is opposite to hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent to hypotenuse, and tangent is opposite to adjacent. So before we worry about solving for anything, we've got to make sure that you can recognize the correct relationship to use. Um, and so let's take a look maybe more closely at this. The key to success, at least initially, is labeling correctly. So if you remember my technique, this is the hypotenuse, this is the adjacent, this is the opposite. In this case, we're solving for an unknown angle, and we have this side, and we have this side. So this is definitely a cosine relationship, because we have an adjacent side, we have a hypotenuse side, and we'd be solving for an angle. In this question, uh, again, let's label right away. The angle here would make this the adjacent, this is our hypotenuse, and this is our opposite. So what do we know here? Well, we know the angle, good, our reference angle. We know the opposite side, and we want to know the hypotenuse. So it becomes fairly obvious that we want to include the number 15. We want to include x, because that's what we're solving, and the angle. We have no need for a this time, so it's opposite and hypotenuse, and that would be our sine ratio is what we would choose. In this next case, let's again start by correctly labeling. We make our arc here. This is our H, this is our A, this is our O. And um, in this case, we definitely want to use the number 15. We definitely want to find the value for X, and we know the angle. So which values are being used here is the adjacent and the hypotenuse and the angle. That, of course, is our friend cosine. Let's continue with a little more practice. So in this case, uh, this is my referencing angle. That makes this H and this A. This makes this my opposite. I want to solve for X, so let's include opposite side. I have the hypotenuse, so I need that. And I want it, I have this angle. So in this case, we, are, we need O, and we're involving with H. And so you know what that one is by now. That is the sine ratio in this case. Let's keep going. Uh, let's mark our arc. This is an adjacent. This is an opposite. And uh, again, I have my angle involved. Now, what do we know here? Well, we know the 14, and we want to know this. This, of course, becomes tangent because we have the 14, and we have, and we want to know x, and we have an angle. So this would be a tangent ratio is what we would use in this case. What we're trying to show you is how to decide which ratio is the one that you want to use. So uh, our arc or angle is here. This is our adjacent. This is our hypotenuse. This is our opposite. Um, we have our opposite, and we have uh, we want to know x, and we want to know our and we have our angle, and so this is an opposite, and an uh, and an adjacent side. And that particular ratio is our tangent ratio. All right, it's time to get to be solving. So I'm going to make this nice and big so I've got some space here. You always begin a trig problem by labeling your side. So hopefully you're getting good at this. This is A and H, and this is our O. So in this case, uh, just like we practiced a second ago, um, I have 12, I have 15, and I want to know the angle. 
So this happens to be cosine, would be our relationship. So we would say the cosine of our unknown angle is the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse. Now the way this works when you don't have a table but you have a calculator is when you're finding the angle you use the inverse function on your calculator. So I want you to hit second and then cosine and that should have this symbol and then put in 12 divided by 15 and your answer will appear. A couple things. Generally we go to two decimal places so take a look at yours and take a look at mine. The other thing if you got nothing like this then your calculator is probably in radian mode and you need to switch it to degrees so if, if this doesn't work. What I want you to notice is when we're solving for the angle and we have the ratio we kind of are working through a backwards process by taking the inverse of this value. Let's move on to the next one. Um, here again we have an adjacent, here again we have a hypotenuse. This is cosine again, this would be the cosine of some angle would be adjacent over hypotenuse. Again we would type in the cosine but inverse of cosine and so hit second cosine and then enter that value. Again, verify your answer with mine, and, and I'm going to continue to slide along. In the next case, uh, we see that this is our adjacent, this is our hypotenuse, and 16 becomes the opposite. Um, we need the 16 because it's a value. We need the 6 because it's a value, and we're finding this. So we're looking at something that involves opposite and adjacent, and that, of course, is the tangent of an unknown angle is opposite, 16, over adjacent here. So in this case, we would hit second tangent and enter into this value. And when we do that, we get 69.44 degrees as our value. One more example of how to find an angle. These all work the same way, so it's kind of nice. You see a pattern. Um, I start by marking here. This is my adjacent. This is my hypotenuse. And this is my opposite. Again, which sides and items do I use? I'm going to use the 11, of course, the 21, and I'm finding my angle. This is the first time you and I are using sine. The sine of an angle is its opposite over its hypotenuse. We would hit second sine to obtain the inverse function, and when we take the inverse of that, we get 31.59, 31.59. This is how you solve an angle, and they all work the same way. Can you see that they all did basically the exact same thing, and solving an angle is an easy process. All right, type number two. If you can solve for an angle, now we're going to solve for the side. So you'll notice the angle is provided now, um, and some of the sides are now. So this is, of course, our adjacent, our hypotenuse. This is our opposite. What do we have? We have a 21 for a hypotenuse, we have x that we want to find, and we know the angle. So in this case, we want to involve the sine ratio of a 28 degree triangle, and it would be the opposite over the hypotenuse. Now to solve this, um, one way I do this is I put this over 1 and then cross multiply, and I get 21 times the sine of 28. And you can just type that directly into your calculator. And when you do that, um, it will kick out the value of 9.86. So this here takes 21 and it multiplies it by that sine ratio. And that's the whole idea of what similarity means is it doesn't matter how big or how small, it will calculate that for us. Let's show you how that repeats itself one more time. In solving for the next one, we make our arc here. This would be hypotenuse, adjacent, and opposite. Uh, what items do we have? We have an angle, we have an adjacent, and we have an opposite. So this has nothing to do with hypotenuse. This is a tangent ratio that would be of a 41 degree triangle and it would relate the opposite side to the hypotenuse, or to the adjacent, sorry. When we cross multiply, we get 11 times the tangent of 41. And that number, you just slam that into the old calculator, and you're going to get 9.56 centimeters in terms of that. 
things are following a nice little pattern, aren't they? They just kind of keep doing the same type of thing. Watch. We make our arc. This is the adjacent. This is the hypotenuse. This is my opposite. And uh, I have an angle. In this case, I want to know the adjacent. And I have the 30, which is the hypotenuse. This would be a cosine question because it involves uh, an adjacent and um, the uh, hypotenuse. When I cross multiply, I get this nice little number, which is 30 times the cosine ratio of, of 53. And then uh, that value uh, uh, gives me a total value of 18.05 centimeters. We still have one more type after this group, but hopefully you're seeing a pattern here. I make my arc. This is a hypotenuse. This is my adjacent. This is my opposite. I recognize that I need to involve the x. I have an 8 and I have an angle. So this is an opposite and hypotenuse, which is sine. The sine of a 50 degree is the opposite x over the hypotenuse 8. When I cross multiply that, I nicely get 8 times the sine of 50, and that value turns out to be 6.13 centimeters. Please, please note that in all of these cases, they set up, one of the things that I want you to notice is in all of these cases, the x was in the numerator, and I guarantee that most students begin to believe that that's always the case, and that this was always the case for all four of these. But x will not always be in the, in the numerator. Watch how it can change. All right, here we go again. This is my adjacent. This is my hypotenuse. This is my opposite. What do I have? Well, I have an opposite side. I want to know the adjacent, and I have the angle. Watch how this sets itself up. This would be tangent of 62 degrees is equal to the opposite, 24, over the adjacent. Notice x is now in the denominator because that represents the adjacent side in this. When we cross multiply, we get this value. And you'll notice we aren't quite done yet. We would divide both sides by the tangent of 62. Don't worry, that your calculator knows how to handle that. So take that value, this one right here, and take 24 and divide it by the tangent of 62. And when you do that, you get the value of 12.76 when rounded appropriately. So when um, this is in the denominator, which it does get there once in a while, depending on what the ratio is, you will find that there's an extra step of division in here. But we'll find a shortcut to that. Here we go again. This is our hypotenuse. This is our adjacent. And I think we're ready to go. We have our angle. We have an adjacent. We want to know the hypotenuse. This, of course, is a cosine question. So it's the cosine of 34 is equal to the adjacent, which is 18 over x. When we cross multiply, we get 18 equals x times cosine of 34. Um, but we're going to divide both sides by the cosine of 34. And when we do that, um, this value presents us with our answer. And so 18 divided by the cosine of 34 is 21.71 centimeters. Let's just do one more, even though I've got two here. I'm running out of space. Let's do uh, our labeling. And you're getting the hang of labeling, hopefully, by now. Adjacent and hypotenuse. This is my opposite. Who's involved in the game? Well, the opposite has to be. The adjacent has to be. And so does the 48 degrees. This would be tangent because we're dealing with uh, an opposite, an opposite over an adjacent. And when we cross multiply, we get x times the tangent of 48. And we're going to divide both sides by the tangent of 48. And on this side, um, of course, that leaves us with x. And on the other side, it leaves us with the answer. So take 12 and divide it by the tangent of 48, and we should get 10.80 centimeters. Now you've seen all three types of solving. This is all trigonometry really is, and I know that might be surprising to you. 
But basically, you are either one, solving for an angle, that's one thing, two, you're solving for a side, and that side might have the x in the, in the numerator, or you might be solving for a side, and that x might be in the denominator. So there are basically three formats to solving. If you're going after the angle, so you're not, you do not know the angle, but you know the ratio, we learned that you always use the inverse of sine, or cosine, or tangent. So you do the inverse, and put in that ratio, and it will tell you the angle every time. That's the only time, guys, that we use that inverse, not ever down here. Now here, if we find that our unknown value is in the numerator, we found that every time in those examples, when we cross-multiplied, uh, we got uh, a multiplication relationship. We, got, we just had to multiply those guys together. We found when x was in the denominator, as it is in this case, we found out that every time it was always the number divided by the ratio. Now, if you can remember that, that's a huge shortcut for you.